Oh. <laughs> What's up everybody? Real Ninjas here, Chum Bucket and Squid Face. We're going out there gonna do some rock fishing today in the name of science. What do you think about that? We getting scientific. That's right. Let's go do some biology. coming out with us today. My name is Jen. I'm the lead field scientist for Moss Landing Marine Labs. I'm also the statewide coordinator for CCFRP, so I help run the operations throughout the state now. Um, a few important people for you guys to know today. Our captain today is Alan. He's right here. Um, he'll be responsible for first and foremost keeping us safe, helping us find those fish, and keeping us inside our grid cells. Our deckhand today is Kyle. He's right here with the hat. Um, Kyle will be helping us bring up gear. He's been doing a lot of that already this morning. Um, so if you guys have your own personal rod, once I assign you a station number and a gear type, we can help get you guys set up. Um, also, while we're fishing, if you guys get snagged or caught up, um, go ahead and call for Kyle and he'll be able to get that snag out right away. Um, my science crew today, we have Katie, we have Jimmy, we have Rachel, and we have Jessica. So the five of us will be busy running around the boat taking fish off your line, processing them here at our central tagging station, and then releasing them. We have a variety of descending devices on the port side that we'll be using to release fish back down to depth. Um, so a little bit of history about the program for those of you who are new to the project. We have some new faces today. Um, the program was developed back in 2007 when Rick Starr from Moss Landing Marine Labs and Dean Went from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo got together to devise a program to monitor this new statewide network of MPAs along the Central Coast. So the types of data that we're collecting are species compositions, length frequencies, and catch rates, and we're evaluating those over time, both inside and outside of marine protected areas. Um, and as I mentioned, we went statewide just last year, so we now have groups from uh, San Diego all the way up to Humboldt, um, six academic institu institutions doing the same sort of work that we're doing right now. So everyone's out in their field season. Um, so because of this, the scientific rigor of our program, we have a number of standardized protocols that we try to adhere to on our vessels. Um, and so if we ask you to change or modify anything, it's likely for that reason. Um, so you'll notice we have all these big totes here. These are all numbered bins that will be filled with fresh seawater. Um, once we get underway, I'll assign everybody an angler number, which corresponds to the specific gear type. So we adhere to these three gear types all day long. That way we can compare our data year to year. So anglers one through four will be on the bow. They'll be fishing a lingcod bar with a shrimp fly teaser. Six through nine will be here on the starboard side fishing shrimp flies, no bait and 11 through 14 will be on the port side fishing shrimp flies with strips of squid mantle. So try to remember your gear type, adhere to that gear type all day. If you're supposed to be fishing with bait, make sure that those hooks are baited. Um, and also keep that angler number in the back of your head. We'll be doing some switching today. Um, and so just try to remember that number when we come around and ask you. Um, a couple of other things as part of our standardized protocols. Um, today we'll be fishing in the Southeast Farallon Islands reference cells. So these are areas that are open to fishing normally. Um, we'll be doing four grid cells. Our grid cells are 500 meters by 500 meters. And within each grid cell, we'll be doing three 15 minute drifts. So it's about three hours of active fishing. Um, we'll kind of let you guys know where we are in the process, when we're gonna move cells, when it's time to um, take a break, grab a sip of water, things like that. Um, so also part of our standardized protocols, we fish with barbless hooks. Um, so just do a quick double check before you throw your line in the water. Make sure that, uh, that cr uh, bar is crimped down all the way. Um, we wanna try to minimize the hook damage to the lip of the fish. Um, if you guys, get a fish so Alan will set us up on station he'll let everybody know when to get ready when he says get ready go ahead and stand by your numbered bin get your line ready to drop in the water that way when he says go you can just drop it down right away that's when we're gonna start time start that 15 minutes um, we'll go fishing for 15 minutes and then you'll hear me or one of my crew call time at that point in time go ahead and reel up 
um, if you guys are over or under time for any reason, um, you didn't hear us call time or you got snagged and you, your line broke off, please do tell us. It helps us more accurately calculate those catch rates. Um, okay, so Alan will set us up on station. If you guys get a fish on, go ahead and say fish on, something to that effect. Let us science crew know. Um, hopefully one of us will be around to take that fish directly off your line to our tagging station. Um, if it's super busy and we're not available, go ahead and just gently bring your rig over your bucket of seawater and you can shake the fish off or gently put the fish into the bucket and we'll be circling around to grab those. Um, and just kind of keep an eye out if we forget and you know say you're in the corner here and we don't see your bin as often just go ahead and let us know that there's a fish in your bin. Um, when you do get a fish on and you're bringing it over the rail uh, go ahead and hold that sinker for us it really helps alleviate the tension in the line and gets that hook out much easier uh, much quicker. If you guys get a big fish or large rockfish, a lingcod, a lingcod that's hitchhiking, that's not actually hooked, um, go ahead and call for a big net. One of us will be by to net those data points onto the boat. Um, rockfish also experience barotrauma, um, which means when they are brought up from depth in the water column, their swim bladder expands. It basically acts like a giant life jacket. They can't swim down on their own. So hence the variety of descending devices we have, but occasionally, especially if we're fishing a little bit deeper, will pop up. So if you see a floater, please let us know. Um, we'll try to either, if we kind of drift into it, scoop it up, or at the end of the drift, we'll turn around and come back and get it. Um, another thing today that's normally that's different from our typical catch and release today we will be retaining a small subset of fishes um, we're working in collaboration with the National Marine Fishery Service to do some aging with otoliths and genetics with fin clips um, so we have a short list of species that we're kind of looking for today so if we encounter any of those that's why those guys are going into the cooler if you guys have questions about those protocols or about that project don't hesitate to ask any one of us science crew um, go ahead and reel up slowly also. That's one other thing to remember. No need to set the hook, um, especially if we are fishing a little bit deeper, just trying to minimize those effects of barrow trauma as much as possible. Um, we have donuts and water in the cabin for you guys. Um, and it's about probably two and a half hours ish to get there. Um, but Alan will now give us our safety spiel. All right guys, uh, first things first, safety of course. All right. Uh, your life raft is up on top of the roof. It's a white container you see up there, just like on the other boat. It's a white container and it's an inflatable device, all right? So should something go wrong with this vessel and we need to get off of her, uh, it will deploy itself. Zebra. The pink zebra and what do you got? Oh no. It's like yellow? Yellow, brown, a little, a little orange. Cool. What about you? Let's see. Let's see what you got. Uh, you got a white? white rusted white, white with rust. <laughs> <laughs> The anglers are anxiously waiting the captain's word to drop their baits. Let's see, the baits are ready to go down. Send. Yeah, don't go to the bottom, guys. In 10 seconds. 
Fish on. Seven to twenty now. Right under the hook. Two? Nice. <laughs> 27 to swim. Come on, let's rock it. Swim. Anybody else? <laughs> One, all over yep. 35 to swim. I'm recording um, who caught it, the species, length, tag number, and then the condition codes. Go ahead. 11, all of 30. 34 to swim. You're supposed to be doing ninja stuff. Don't reel them up too high. Oh, you got two. All right, swing them in. Swing them in. Reel up a little bit. There we go. We've got the double hookup. Just caught and we measured back to depth. So the sequelizer is going to release at a specific depth um, and let the fish go. Squid face got an olive. Now let me stop the clock right here, guys. Wind them up. Get back on the fish. Nice olive. Good size one. Jen's doing science. Six other out with us today. Um, it's a bit swelly at times. We appreciate you guys hanging in there and working hard. Um, big thank you to Captain Allen and Deckhand Kyle. Thank you guys so much for helping us find those fish. Um, keeping us on the fish the whole time, Allen. And then for Kyle for helping us rig up gear and get fish off your lines. Kyle has a tip jar that's sitting right here on the cutting board. Please do think of him on your way out in the form of tips. Um, he's not filleting any fish today, so not getting paid that way. So he helped everyone rig up their gear, get snags out, retie gear. So again, please do think of him on your way out. Um, 
If you guys are on social media, we have a Facebook page, Instagram. We're also on YouTube. You can follow us at CCFRP. If you guys are posting your own photos today, we'd love to see them. Please do tag us in those. Um, but yeah, we'll be posting updates from today's trip as, uh, along with a few photos as well as the rest of our trips throughout the season. Um, and if you're interested in seeing what our other um, partners across the state are doing, they also post to these social media accounts. So go ahead and give us a follow. Um, I will give you guys totals now as well as a couple of prizes. Um, so this was our fishiest day yet at the Farallon Islands. It was great. We got the puffin. We saw the puffin. We saw we had decent weather. It was, it was all around a good day. A little bit of sunshine. Um, so from 12 different species, we caught 691 fishes. Amazing. Um, and our closest guess was 684 and that was Jonathan. Where's Jonathan? Nice, yay! So Jonathan, we have a Moss Landing t-shirt for you. Uh, another fun thing, so 691 was our total. 82% of those were Blues and Deacons. So tons of Blues and Deacons today. Um, but we did get one Vermilion, and also the biggest link cod today was caught by the same person, and that was Mark. So Mark, we have a cool Vermilion sticker, how appropriate, awesome. and a jig for you. Thank you. Um, and our last prize of the day is kind of a fun one, maybe in honor of Ryan cool. Fields, who's not here today. Yeah, but um, we had, uh, let's see, yeah. 11 <laughs> rosies. So we we're thinking who caught the most rosies. It was tied four and four. So the tiebreaker was who caught the smallest rosie. That rosie was 11 centimeters. And the person who caught four rosies and the smallest was Gary. So Gary, we have a super cool Ray Troll salmon poster yeah. for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So thank you guys again for all of your hard work. We really appreciate it. Um, and we hope to see you guys on a trip very soon. And don't forget Kyle on your way out. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, yeah. science crew. Uh, yes. All right. So uh, as you know, we do the real ninja tradition. At the end of the fishing trip, we always slap each other with a fish. Uh, but since this is a catch and release, uh, we don't have any fish. We're just gonna slap each other. You ready? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Real ninja tradition. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That was awesome.